Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the steps uh, for how to use Google Sheets for your IA is, uh, in terms of um, crunching your numbers, analyzing your data, calculating the mean, the standard deviation, and then also creating your scatter plot, adding in your tread line, and creating error bars that are all different sizes based on standard deviation. So stick with me. This video is going to be um, it's unscripted. It's going to be unedited. So just follow along, and hopefully we can get through this. So I'm going to first assume that you have uh, your Google Sheets document already set up like this, which means that you have already um, identified a range for your independent variable, your dependent variable, and you have done five trials of each one. And then you have actually calculated uh, and, and collected all of your data. Okay, so the first thing that we're, we're going to do is we're going to average out um, the numbers that we have for each trial of the range of our independent variable. So with this sample experiment here, uh, I've done uh, reaction time as I, that is measured as my dependent variable versus sound frequency uh, that I have in Hertz up at the top. So I first want to calculate the average of my five trials of my frequency of 100 Hertz. So in order to do that, and I'm going to just do it uh, on the Google Sheet and so I don't have to actually calculate it by hand, so we can just use the commands and the equations built into the system, so it's uh, pretty easy. So I'm going to hit the equal sign, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to start typing in average. So I'm just going to put AV, and then I have a couple options that pop up. So I just want to go to uh, the second option here, the average, just the normal average. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to say equals average. It's going to have an open parenthesis. So in that scenario, I'm going to click and drag over the uh, five points that I want to average. I can close the parenthesis and click enter. And then I have now averaged out uh, all these numbers. Now what I could do is I could keep calculating the average the same way for all four of these, but just to keep it simple and to keep it easy, um, Google Sheets actually has a copy and paste uh, function for formulas and it's this little blue box on the bottom right. So I'm actually going to click this and you notice as you hover over it there's a little plus sign. I'm going to click this box I'm just going to drag it over to all the other means that I need to calculate and then I just uh, let go or unclick and then you see that all of my averages are different and they are all based on uh, the column of numbers that uh, sit above it. Okay. So for calculating standard deviation we're going to do the same thing equals and you can start typing in uh, standard and then if you just click ST this option should pop up this first one for standard deviation I'm gonna click on that and then I have the same thing that pops up in open parenthesis and I want to calculate the deviation between all five numbers that I had in or for each trial I'm gonna close the parenthesis I'm gonna click enter and then this is gonna calculate my standard deviation for me Again, I could do it individually, but to save time, I'm going to click this box, I'm going to drag it, and now I have all of my standard deviations, and you need to make sure that all of them are different, assuming that all of the values that you have collected are going to be different. Uh, you should not have the same standard deviation, deviation. you should not have the same mean for um, all of your data, and that just uh, ensures that the click and drag process worked. So now what I want to do is I want to take this information, and I want to turn it into a graph. So in order to do that, and I'm going to zoom out so you can see a little bit more of my screen. When I'm graphing, I want to graph my independent variable, which is Hertz, and I want to graph the averages that I calculated, which is really only going to be five points. So uh, I'm just going to label this for you here, so you can do the same if you want to. So I'm going to have my independent variable, IV, and my dependent variable, I'm just going to put capital D, capital V. So my independent variable I said was frequency, and I'm going to measure that in hertz. So I'm just going to put hz uh, as the unit. And then I was measuring my dependent variable reaction time in seconds. So I'm just going to put a uh, lowercase s for seconds. Now what I want to do is uh, horizontally in this row, I want to just after this box, I want to 
place my five values of my independent variable and the five values for my dependent variable. So within the range of my independent variable, I have 100 hertz was my first one, then 300, then 500, 700, and 900. Now you want to make sure that for all of these, if you copy and paste this, you cannot have any letters within this box. You'll see that if you have any letters, it pushes it over to the left-hand side of the cell, which means it's not really going to treat it as a number. And we don't want that because we're trying to graph. And we want this to be an actual value. So all the numbers are pushed to the right, which is perfect. This one, I'm actually going to copy and paste. So I'm going to highlight all five of these numbers. And I can hit Control C, or I can right click and hit copy. And then right here, either Control, or actually I can't click Control V. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to Paste Special. And I'm going to click Paste Values Only, which ensures that I'm not actually taking over uh, this equation that I have calculating this number. I just want to pull the number itself. So now we have everything that we need. You're going to highlight uh, both of these values, which are the units, including all of these numbers. So it should look just like this. And then I'm going to go over to Insert. And then I'm going to click Chart. So this pops up. You have your graph right here. And then there's also this uh, new editor feature that pops up. At least I think it's relatively new, um, in which I can use to manipulate uh, my uh, graph that I have here. So. First and foremost, it gives me my data in a bar graph. I do not want a bar graph. Both of my variables are continuous variables, so I really want to use a scatter plot. So to do that, you're going to go to Chart Type in the uh, editor. You're going to click this drop-down arrow, and then you're just going to scroll down a little bit until you see Scatter, and it's the first Scatter one. It says Scatter Chart, and you're going to click on Scatter Chart. And now this gives me exactly what I need all of my data in a uh, scatter plot. So once I have this, I need two more things. Well, first, obviously, I need to fix um, I need to fix the titles of the x and y axis. I need to fix the title of the entire graph. But I'm not focusing on that in this video. I'm just worried about can you add a tread line and can you add error bars based on standard deviation uh, that are all unique. So. To add the tread line, this is where we started. You want to go to your editor and you want to click the tab on the right that says Customize. And then within this drop down arrow, you want to go to Series, click, uh, click on Series, and then you're going to go down to Tread Line and you're going to click this box. So now you can see that a tread line has been added. And the other thing that you want to do is you want to add in the uh, correlation coefficient which is an R squared value. And we're going to be talking about what this R squared value actually means later. But for right now, let's just keep that clicked. My R squared value for this set of data is 0 0.92. So the tread line is pretty easy. Now the next part is we have to add the error bars. Now here's the problem, at least that I'm finding with Google Sheets. And I am sure that there's a video out there to do this in an easier way. But I have not found that video. and I'm really not sure how to do this. So the problem with Google Sheets is that if I want to add error bars, I can go to Series. And then there is a button right here for error bars. If I click this button, the problem is it treats all of these points like they're the same. They're, they're within the same series. So it's going to give them all the same error bars. So I can go to like a constant number. I can have that number be um, like 0 0.05. And then they're all going to go up plus 0 0.5 and minus or 0 0.05. But they're all going to be the same. And that's not what I want because my standard deviation for all of these is different. So I figured out a way to like maneuver around this. It's definitely not easy, but it'll work. And hopefully, if somebody finds an easier way to do this, they can post a video on it. But for right now, this is how I'm going to do it. So follow along with me. First, I'm going to get rid of these error bars that I added. Uh, so now we're like starting from scratch. OK. In order to set this up, I'm going to just put my graph down here for now. 
And what I'm going to do, this is my data that I use to, uh, to calculate or to create this graph. So I'm going to highlight the five numbers that I measured with my dependent variable. And I'm going to hit Control C. I'm going to copy them. And then I'm going to actually copy this entire row five times underneath it. One, two, three, four, five. OK, now what did this do? Essentially what this did was I just layered another five other series of these points in my graph on top of each other. So my graph kind of looks the same, but I have all these other different colored dots here because I just put five copies of these dots on top of each other. So I want to treat all of these as uh, a separate series for an individual dot that I can place an actual error bar in. So this is how we're going to do it. First, we're going to label. So the first series that I added, this new row right here, I'm going to click this cell. I'm just going to put 100 hertz for me to label it so I know what it is. My next one is going to be 300 hertz. And this is just based off my independent variable, 500 hertz, 700 hertz, and 900 hertz. And I'm adding in the actual letters because I don't do not want this to be treated as a number. And you'll notice that, well, it just popped up and it labeled all these points. Okay, and that's exactly what you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match these up to the value that I want to have like copied over it. And I'm going to delete all the other ones that I don't want. So this is 100 hertz. So I only want to keep the value right here for 100 hertz. So I'm going to go ahead and delete every other value in this row. Then we do the same thing for the next one, for 300 hertz. I only want to keep the number that is uh, in line with 300, so I'm going to delete all of the other ones. For 500, I'm going to keep it underneath. I'm going to delete everything that isn't 500. Then I'm going to do the same thing for 700, and then the same thing for 900. So now it should kind of look like um, like a line with a, a negative slope kind of going down. And then you'll notice if you look back at your graph, all these dots are now different colors. And the different colors represent um, these new series that we just made, which is putting these points on top of each other, copying these points. So now we're going to add our error bars to these points. Okay? So now we're going to go back to our original data. I'm going to start with 100 hertz. This standard deviation is the error bar that I want to add. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy it. Then I'm going to go back to my graph. I'm going to double click on my graph. It's going to open up this editor. And I'm going to go to Customize. I'm going to go to Series. And then now it gives me this option to apply to all series. And that's what I do not want to do. So instead, I have my deviation for 100 hertz. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click this drop down arrow. I'm going to click on the label I made for uh, 100 hertz, which is just this red point. It's going to treat it as an individual point. I'm going to click error bars. And you'll see that it pops up. Now I don't want a percent, so I'm going to change this percent to constant. And then I'm going to get rid of this 10 value that's uh, a placeholder. And I'm going to copy and paste my deviation. So now this gives me the deviation that I had for my data at 100 hertz. Now I'm just going to continue to do the same thing for, two, for 300 hertz. I'm going to copy my deviation. I'm going to double click on my graph. I'm going to go to series. I'm going to go to 300 hertz. I'm going to click error bars. I'm going to switch it to a constant. And I'm going to change that value to my deviation. And then now I have my error bars. And the key thing here is that the, your error bars are different sizes. That's exactly what we want because we had different standard deviation for the different uh, ranges of your independent variable. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do these ones pretty fast. If you uh, need to rewatch, you can rewind. So 500 hertz, error bars, constant, paste. 700, double click. Series, I want 700 error bars, constant, paste. 
And then my last one, I gotta move this. Copy this. Double click. Oops. Customize. Series. 900. Error bars. Constant. And paste my value. So now you'll see, this gives me the error for each point separately, which is exactly what I want, based off of my standard deviation. So now, you usually don't want your graph looking like a rainbow, so I'm gonna go back to this, to series, and I can go to all of these individually, and I can change uh, the color. So I can change the color of that tread line to black, which is my original set, uh, my original series that I had. I can go to 100 hertz, change it to black, 300, black, 500, same thing, 700, and 900. Okay, so now this is exactly the graph that I need. I would recommend, uh, because this doesn't really make too much sense as a legend, because you don't really want the, uh, the reader to know that you're stacking points on top of each other. It's kind of like, it's kind of cheating the system to do this right. So I'm gonna go to legend over here, and I'm just gonna uh, click none, so it gets rid of that legend. And then um, for your R squared value, you can just write that in, uh, in your IA as you write it up later. So that's all I got. If you have any questions or comments, uh, you can leave that in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in class.